Folks, this is Retro Reload. We've got a special edition uh, for you this Tuesday. We've got a bombshell of a news release to share with you guys. And then uh, after that, we're going to be going back to Super Mario uh, Maker and give you our thoughts, you know, one week in not only building our own levels but playing each other's levels. We'll even be sharing some of our favorite levels with you and maybe doing a playthrough of, uh, of different levels that, that we or you have created. So first up, uh, Jeremy, you want to get us kicked off with our news? Uh, we'll cover the retro thing last, but um, one of the first things is Yoshi, Bowser, and Toad. We remotes are coming to the United States, which actually I'm interested in because I need new remotes. I got like half a dozen Wii remotes. I, I bought a uh, used Wii console at a thrift store um, for cheap, and it came with a network adapter and four Wii remotes and four nunchucks when I already had four Wii remotes and nunchucks for my existing Wii. So, I might have to buy some off you. Oh, I'm telling you, you know, I'm I'm planning on saving them until they become worth as much as CDI controllers. Oh, because I only got two of them and one nunchuck. <laughs> and then I'll just part them out. Okay, next. I got. I have some scratch and dent ones that, if you don't mind them being banged up and stuff, I'll just give. If I'll just give you. I'm good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, on that, the uh, the new uh, Weebos, the, the was it Toad and Bowser and Yoshi, right? You know, I, I kind of missed... I mean, I got an email from GameStop about something else, and it was sort of included in there, and I kind of thought, oh, is this news? I, I didn't know. I, I assumed they were already out for some reason. I don't know why I, I thought that. I only, if I understand it correctly. No. Yeah, I'm not sure. I just I saw that like a week ago, and I was like, hmm, all right. But, okay. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Next news is this week. Game releases are FIFA 16. I'm not interested in NBA 2K16, Animal Crossing, Happy Home Designer, uh, the Skylander stuff, which is a bunch of, uh, I guess they're like Amiibos, I guess, sort of. Then the Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition, which is a GameStop exclusive, which is obviously they're writing off the Fallout 4 news. Then there's a Call of Duty Black Ops 3, one terabyte PS4 bundle, which is kind of cool. I think this is the first terabyte for the PS4 without an upgrade. Oh. And the last bit is um, Spider-Man will be age 15 in Marvel's forthcoming reboot. So I don't know if you guys are Spider-Man fans. In the game? No, the movie. The, the oh, in the, re- the movie. movie, okay. I didn't hear that. Marvel reboot, right? Yeah. Marvel. Oh. He'll be age 15. Really? But to the big news with Dash V. For the big news, guys. This this is news. Um, do your own research. Find out. Decide for yourself. But um, the retro or yeah, the retro VGS uh, game console, uh, the Indiegogo project for that launched a couple of days ago, and it's only taken a day or two since the launch for things to totally and completely go sideways. Um, there are multiple forums. Atari Age is one of them, uh, as well as a, a series of others. Just folks raging over the fact that the retro guys have launched a, a, a campaign uh, without having a working prototype uh, to demonstrate what they're actually going to be capable of. So at this point, there's a there's a shell that's based on the Jaguar Atari Jaguar mold and uh, and a controller which is based off of a US you know, a USB controller, third-party controller for for some existing consoles and stuff. Other than this controller, though, and this, you know, empty shell, everything else is pretty much just, you know, like, like um, specs on a sheet. And even more uh, troubling is that the, the specifications that were documented on the Facebook page and a lot of the posts that they made for things that we'd previously announced, like ColecoVision support and Atari support, you know, being there through adapters at launch has been totally removed, and now the wording of the the Indiegogo uh, campaign uh, would seem to imply that that some of those retro uh, backward compatible features uh, will only be there if they make four million dollars in contributions, uh, which is twice 
what they're asking for for just a base, uh, you know, the base contribution. They're hoping to raise just under two million, and as their stretch goal, if they make four million, they'll give some of the other features that they've been talking about all along, um, including um, the FPGA that they were originally targeting using. It's unclear now whether or not if they get two million bucks, if that or some other lesser quality FPGA will be included. Um, additionally, in Atari Age, uh, a long-term, a long-time uh, guy that's been doing a lot of, um, you know, his own homebrew and development, uh, both of software and hardware, Kevtris, mm -hmm. uh, developer of the USB Copyness, which is a, a daughter board that you can plug into your existing NES console with some soldering skills and uh, allows you to copy and back up and even flash uh, EPROMs for NES games. Um, he was supposedly uh, the mastermind behind the FPGA cores that they were going to use. The, the FPGA, for those that don't know, the Retro was actually um, planned to come with an FPGA uh, that's a fully programmable computer, basically, inside the console and you could have different definitions that would configure that computer to be any other type of computer, like a Nintendo Entertainment System, or an Atari, or a Game Gear. Um, Kevtris has made about, I think it was somewhere between 10 to 20 cores uh, that can run on an FPGA with nearly 100% accuracy for these various different retro systems. Um, supposedly, if, if the posts in Atari age from both the folks at Retro VGS and Kevtris are to be believed, he was going to be the supplier or a potential supplier of those cores. Um, Kevtris voiced some concerns with some of the logistics and planning behind the Retro VGS and the Indiegogo that got launched, and one of the representatives of Retro VGS publicly basically said, Kevtris, what's going on, dude? You're out. We're done. So without his cores and without his software, um, I don't really know what's going to drive an FPGA, if it even has an FPGA anymore. Um, and I don't really know that the market will bear a competitor that's just coming in playing games on an ARM-based architecture that can't really differentiate itself from Android and other things, other than having physical cartridges. Yeah, I don't... I mean, their, their current goal is, what, like 1.9... Million, something like that. It's, it's almost two million. Their current goal is yeah, it's one uh, one million nine hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. So far, they've raised sixty five thousand uh, dollars, sixty five thousand five hundred and eighty USD. Yeah, I mean, if uh, there's no way they're going to get four million dollars to to do the FPGA, I'd I don't be surprised think they're going to get two million. million no, yeah, yeah, I'd be surprised if they get one million at this point. Yeah, yeah. And so it, I, it, it is it is important to note also that it's not it's um, because I know there's been some talk, you know, about Indiegogo versus Kickstarter. You know, uh, Indiegogo supposedly allows you to keep the money even if your project get, doesn't get all the way funded. Um, there's they have two to, different. Yeah, there's two different options, and, and that, that's what I want to say. Yeah. Is that is that I mean, to their credit, the the RG or the the retro BGS guys have said if we don't if we don't get it, everybody gets all their money back. So so yeah. that's good. Yeah. You know, yeah, that, that, that is, that is it's still a little bit of confidence. Yeah, to be clear, right, I want to make it clear because, I mean, there are some wild, wild stories, accusations, and conjecture going on in some of these forums, mm -hmm. um, you know, calling these guys snake oil salesmen and scammers. Oh. I mean, these guys have produced a legit retro magazine that you can go into the store today and, and pick up issues for. You can do a subscription for. Um, a lot of these guys were around and, and you know... Um, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Contributors to like the original PlayStation scene and consoles mm -hmm. and things like that. So I mean, these guys, I think technically, right, are sharp guys and know what they're doing. I, I do believe truly that they're gamers at heart and that they're really just trying to, you know, people are complaining. Everything's all digital. It's day one patch this and you mm -hmm. know upgrade this and and they want to kind of get they they want to get rid of that. They want to go back to the days where like you just bought it. You just buy it and it works. You get the cartridge and it works. Ten years from now when all the servers are dark, your stuff still works. And I think that's a commendable, you know, goal. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think that they're, like, trying to con people or anything. I think they fully intend to deliver on, on what it is they're promising. 
But I do yeah. think that maybe they're being a little too uh, loose with, you know, at, at some point you need to ground what it is you intend to do mm -hmm. in some kind of technical reality. And the reality is that a lot of the folks that are retro, um, I include myself in this, Tyler, maybe maybe you, you do, mm -hmm. let, let me know, but oh, yeah. I, the reason I'm into retro is because I miss the days when a layperson could understand the hardware, could understand the software, when the games were just intuitively simplistic and it was just pick up and play. I didn't. I had a manual, maybe it was a color manual, right? Um, but I didn't have to read the manual. The manual was kind of like a, a supplement to the experience. It wasn't like I have to read an eight-page guide and go through a four-hour tutorial before I can finally like play level one like they are nowadays. It was Pac-Man, pick up and play. Missile Command, pick up and play. Mario Brothers, pick up and play. So for me, you know, it it is important that if a console is coming out that says it's going to bring back that retro experience, well, I, I, I'm going to drool and I'm going to and I'm going to you know awe over the specs. If you don't have specs to show me, I'm going to go, what do you got? Yeah, and they, they don't so, have anything. Right, and they they have a hell of an idea, but like, don't. Yeah. You know, don't ask me to put down 300 bucks on something that may or may not have an FPGA advanced enough to play ColecoVision games. Either it does or it doesn't. Yeah, if you're not going to have Atari, I'm not going to be interested. Well, I think, you know, Mike is the guy that's been, that had, been heading this whole thing up. I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember his last name off the, time, off the top of my head. But, I mean, Mike has been around. Mike years. Kennedy. Yes, Kennedy, that's right. He's been around for years. I mean, he's done, like you said, he's done the magazine. He, he yeah. created uh, Game Gavel, the auction Oh, so yeah. I, I mean, he's done a lot of things for the community. So, yeah, yeah I think for anybody to, to call him out and say that he's dishonest or uh, snake oil sells, whatever you want to call it, I've heard right, right. Say, that is bull. Like, he, I, I agree. Yeah, I, I, agree with I that. have the Everyone most respect I'm, for him. But I don't. I've seen a uh, post or comment that's met him personally or that knows him personally says he's a stand up straight guy. Yeah. Right? So. I, I have no reason to believe, you know, otherwise. I do, however, think that, that you know, the you, you are right, too, like with the Indiegogo project, right? They are doing it in the mode where if they don't get everything that they're asking for, none of the contributions are finalized and everything goes back to the people that, that, that pledged. Um, but one of the reasons that they did go Indiegogo instead of Kickstarter was specifically because Kickstarter actually has a thing where if you're doing a hardware-based product, you have to have a functional prototype. Yeah. Um, these guys, when you look at the amount of money and you look at the breakdown, I'm on their Indiegogo page right now, and they're talking about like what the what the breakdown is going to be. Um, if I can see here, um, where do they do their use of funds? Right. They're talking about. Um, you know they're 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 looking to get about half like the, the folks that are going to be working on it they want to be able to work on it full time um, but they're willing to work on it full time for only half what their current industry wages are <laughs> right and people have done all kinds of calculations in the forums to speculate what their wages are and blah 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 i will say this people's back of the envelope calculations for what what these guys would be asking for for you know, half in wages for, for uh, I don't know if it's a one-year period or six months or whatever. Um, if you don't think that an engineer's time is worth those numbers, um, you, you need to go educate yourself. It costs a lot of money to get the training that engineers get to be able to do the job that they do. And oftentimes, especially nowadays, where everything, everything runs on computers, everything runs on data, the, the, the amount of stress and everything that you deal with in a typical day, whether it's making games or making medical devices or keeping internet servers running. Um, it, <laughs> there's a reason why the salaries are what they are, right? And and some of the some of the people that would be, you know, um, kind of second guessing that is surprising to me because these are some of the same people that themselves are hopefully making at least that much. Otherwise they're employed by the wrong people. 
So, because I didn't see anything outrageous. Like, I didn't see them asking for like three hundred thousand dollars a year or anything crazy like that. Um, it wasn't. It, these weren't even six figure numbers for engineers. Which in the Bay Area, like, you can't even get a, you can't even get like an engineer on the phone for under six figures. So, um, the fact that they're not looking to to give themselves six figure salaries while they work on this, I think, is commendable. Right, and in yeah. line with what you said, that these aren't guys that are trying to like take people for a ride. They just want to make sure that they'll be able to focus, and and pay their bills, and plow through all the stuff that needs to be plowed through to get to a working functional product. You know, there is there is one thing that I kind of want to interject here. Um, it was a post actually on Atari H because there's a for those who don't who don't know, I mean there there is a lengthy <laughs> thread on Atari H. Oh yeah, it's, it's over 100. It's, it's 79 pages right now. And I've read every single post. So. I have to, yeah. <laughs> but there's one in there that, that uh, Keptris actually posted. Yeah. And he, he mentioned in there somewhere that it takes it took him, I should say, um, about, I think it was six months to make a core. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, for these guys who, if they have to build, you know, 30 cores, they're not going to get it done in a year. Yeah. If you're working full time. You know, no, they're, maybe, yeah, they're I not. Know. So I think their their whole timetable is way off, even to $4 million. Well, and I think here's the tragic thing. I think the original timetable, and this is pure conjecture based on what I've read from both the retro guys posting and Kevtris and, you know, my own deduction and everything. Um, so it's a bit fact and it's a bit me, you mm-hmm. know, mentally working through the exercise <laughs> in my mind. But I, I think their original projections were based on an assumption that they just had to build the hardware and that they could license the cores from yeah. Kevtris and, oh, yeah. and, they'd be, and they'd be totally covered. Now, if that had been the case, to prototype the hardware, go through a couple fabs, right, an A, a B, and a C model to, to okay, this is the one that we're going to launch, I, I think a year would have been perfectly reasonable mm-hmm. for that. Assuming that, like, if they had the Kevtris timeline, right, like, if it was going to take them, you know, six months to get, because um, there's a couple things, right? He, Kev, Kevtris has not only written cores, but he's also built working boards with FPGAs. Um, I think he's built the last teen boards or something? He's built something, yeah, it's in the teens. He's built them over the last six, seven years. He's got YouTube videos that you can see of this stuff working. Now, here's something that's super important. Right. There's a difference between, and I think there's stuff that we need to understand as people like kind of seeing what's going on, and there's stuff that I think Retro needs to understand, right? Retro has a good point that there's a difference between a working prototype board and having a product that you can actually shrink wrap, put in a box, and have somebody ship to somebody's home in a package similar to, like, say, a Retron 5 or a Retro, right? Now, what Retro needs to understand is there's a difference between having a shell, a controller, and a really kick-ass idea, and having a working product like a Retron 5 that you can put in my home, yeah. right? So I think that the, the, the thing that people need to understand, right, is that really what needs to happen and what's tragic that hasn't happened is that what the retro VGS desperately needs is for both those pieces to come together. Mm-hmm. So now I'm not saying that that means that like it has to be Kevtris that does it and all that kind of stuff. But no, if it's no, not going to be, I think I agree with you. If it's not going to be Kevtris that's going to be supplying that stuff, who who else do they got, right? Because either you're leveraging something that someone else has spent years and months already doing that you can just stuff into the shell and ship with, or you have to start from scratch, and if you have to start all that stuff from scratch by yourself, it, it one year is not going to be anywhere near enough time. No. And there, there, right. there is another kind of interesting development, I, I, and I know you know of this because I, I saw your post on Atari Age, but it, I guess the one sort of, I don't know, good thing that came out of all this, this mess is that now Kevtris is actually talking about making his own console using yeah. his course. Which would be great, you know. So it sounds like if it actually happens, and and there's no no official word yet, right? We would get something, you know. It might not be this this retro BGS that we've been following for you know a year or more, 
you know, now we get this other thing, which may be better, might be worse. Who knows? Yeah, I think, well, what I think is going to be, like, better or worse, I don't think is necessarily a question. I think, I think different, really, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, retro, I finally understand what it is retro is trying to do, and it's really, really ambitious and commendable. Um, mm -hmm. Whether or not it's achievable, I, I can't say. All I can do is armchair quarterback, right? Who the hell am I? I haven't, I haven't built hardware products. I haven't tried to ship hardware products, but... Well, that's all anybody can say, really. <laughs> right. What Retro is trying to do is, like, they're really hoping that this RVGS, like, can compete head-to-head -head with, like, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And they're hoping that it can win based on the cartridge. cartridge cartridges, right? Cartridges and no updates. Here's the problem. That sounds awesome. Do, do I wish that we lived in a time uh, when I could just buy it and it works? Yes. The reality is the developers of today are not that disciplined. I don't think they're necessarily trying to compete, though. I mean, I, I can see them competing more with, like, the, what's that one, the Ouya or whatever it's called. Um, Ouya doesn't know. need competition. Ouya's dead. Well, I know what I'm saying. That's, it seems like that's maybe their, their competition, that, that, that scale. You know? Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess like they're not going to go against Sony or Microsoft yeah. or even even uh, Nintendo. But I think they want to <laughs> try, though. I think they want to try. I think they want to get some of the same developers. I, I think they want to get the indie and the homebrew guys developing mm -hmm. on their console, and I think they they want they want their console to be the definitive way to play. Mm -hmm. Indie and retro style and themed games, which is like I said, commendable, right? And I love the whole like get it right or don't ship it like type of mentality. I I, oh, I think yeah. that's sorely missed in the you know day zero patch age that we now live in. But the reality is like I, I think much like you know building a console is as aggressive you know and ambitious as the VGS in one year. I think it's just another case where it's like wow, really? Because like what I don't know about building and shipping hardware. I sure as heck know about designing software, um, and most of what the retro is going to need to do is going to be software based. Mm -hmm. And I guess I just don't see, um, I don't see the value as a developer in targeting a niche platform um, that really doesn't, you know, without without the FPGA as ambitious as what they talked about. What I thought was neat before is if you were going to go, like Jeremy said, if you were going to go with Atari 2600 support. I mean, off the top of your head, it's like Atari 2600. Why the hell? Well, only because it has one of the biggest homebrew development mm -hmm. scenes of any console ever, period, except for maybe the Dreamcast. Yeah, and, and that's what I was going to say. So is... if you lose the ability to run 2600 games from the cart, plus Coleco, plus all these other you know consoles that have strong homebrew support, and all I'm doing is playing ARM games, what the hell's the point? I'll just get an Android tablet. Well, see, and that's what I was going to say earlier when we were talking about the competition. I mean, as far as I know, there's not much homebrew on the Xbox One, on the PlayStation 4. There's there's no competition there. So right. I think they're trying to to compete with, like, the Atari, the ColecoVision, the, you know, the yeah. older, where there is actually homebrew. Yeah. And I'm sure, I'm sure they want to court some of the, the new developers as well to get, you know, games like Shovel Knight or whatever on there. Yeah. But I, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, I, I, I agree. I agree. So, you know, folks, I'm not saying don't contribute. I'm not saying that these guys are, are bad or evil or whatever. What I am saying is, um, you know, do your research. Figure out what it is that you want. If you want a console, right, that is still under the kind of uh, process of being defined and being, you know, what is it really? Um, and but you're comfortable with it being you know retro themed, and you're comfortable with it playing games from cartridges, and, and the expectation that both the system and the carts will no patches, they have to be shipped correct. You know, throw them your money and show them that you support the product. Uh, if what you're hoping for is a console kind of like the Retron 5 for a bunch of your own old systems like Coleco, Atari, etc., and you're hoping for something that's fun to tinker with because it's got an FPGA that can do all kinds of nifty stuff use some caution because it may not turn out to be that console. It may just turn out to be an ARM processor in a Jaguar shell, um, you know, with a USB controller. So, 
Um, I'm sure those guys will speak up. If one of the guys from, from Retro VGS would like to be on the show, um, I can guarantee you guys that we would give you, you know, an open, objective, safe environment to kind of voice <laughs> your ambitions and your thoughts for the platform, what it can do, what it can't do, you know, maybe clear the air on some of the misconceptions and stuff. Um, yeah. Love to have you guys on. Um, but, you know, for me right now, first I was kind of hesitant. If you remember, a couple episodes back, I was like, I don't really know what they're trying to do. Now I think I understand what they're trying to do, but I just, I'm not, I'm in the camp that I'm not really sure if they can pull it off. Um, and I'm not sure enough about what the product is to know if I should invest my, my 300, and, 300 to $350 in one to find out. I could end up with an ARM-based console that I don't... I don't have any interest in playing ARM games. I have a lot of interest in playing my 2600 homebrews and in playing my ColecoVision games. Yeah, I mean, 300 bucks is a, is a lot to gamble. Yeah, and of I think that's not really a gamble, though, either. Yeah, and that was my other point, too, I guess, with, although we kind of, I got off track a little bit. Kevtris, the hardware that he's talking about, that he's developed, this would be purely for playing your old school games, either from SD or potentially from the original cartridges. So that's that's what I meant by like totally different products, right? Kevtris isn't looking to court developers and get Shovel Knight ported to his yeah. home brew platform. He he's more looking at like a Retron five for the other unloved systems. For everything. Yeah. Right? The, or the lesser loved systems, right? Like if you want to play your game gear games and all that kind of stuff, he would have a platform that would be able to play those games. Um, he's not looking to do what Retro is trying to do, which is, you know, redefine gaming uh, according to some of the old rules, which I think is is a commendable, a commendable goal. But you got to have a solid platform. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there's a, there's a term that I've seen float around on on the Atari Age uh, thread, and it's called feature creep. Yeah. You know, it, I mean, they they came out and they said, all right, it's going to be this. And then they said, oh, it would be cool if we could add this and this yeah. and this and this and this. And it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger Yeah. to the point now where it's impossible. It could it could be impossible. Uh, and I'd only say it could be impossible if, if it really is going to require $2 million to pull off, right, and they really think that they only have a year to do it. And then, yes, I would say that that's, may very well be impossible. If, if they... Um, if I had run the project, here first of all, it probably wouldn't have gotten this far. <laughs> so I just want to throw that out there. But if it, if I had run it and it got this far, and we were going to do an Indiegogo or Kickstarter or whatever, um, probably what I would have done, right, like they are, I'd be up front. There is no working prototype yet. But I probably would have said, like, can we raise 10K to get together a working prototype? Right. If you really need the money to get together a working prototype, ask for 10k and get get a working prototype. Get get a board without the shell and all that other stuff that just you can plug the cartridge in and it does what you expect it to do. Right. And and use VGA out. Don't do all the S video and da da da. Just the cheapest, quickest. Here it is. It works. Right. Work with somebody like Cabtris to get at least one of his cores up and running on the FPGA and then prove that you could do like a, at least one retro system. Then I would say, if you still need money to go the next level, then launch your campaign and say, based on this working prototype that you helped us develop, blah 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 blah. Now we want to go the full run. But don't don't. I would not ask for two million dollars for an idea. I mean, it, if you look through, I won't go through all the rest of it. Um, but you know, they've got like advertising, operating expenses, renting space. And, 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 like, certification and testing. Like, basically, they want Indiegogo to fund the entire company behind building that product. They don't just want a, pro a project to be funded. They basically want the bootstrapping of the retro VGX, like, company paid for by crowdfunding, which I think is, a, is quite a stretch. Yeah, I mean... I like I said, I, I wish them all the all the luck. Yeah. But I I don't see it happening. I mean I I just said it all. Yeah. What I do see happening though is a subject change. 
And that subject change is for Super Mario Maker. Nice segue. Yes. I like it. So, um, I've had a week, week and a half, yeah. maybe, to, to, to play uh, through a bunch of community uh, you know, generated levels, create my own levels. Um, I have to say, like, I was a little bit worried um, that maybe, you know, I had so much fun with it initially, I was worried that maybe it was just going to be a flash in the pan and then I'd get, like, bored and sick of it. But I have to say, like, you know, idling away time, uh, just kind of, like, you know, doodling on a level, uh, and then suddenly it explodes into, like, wow, this is a legit level. I like this. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, going through, I've learned if you want to play levels that are going to be, you know, uh, challenging and more full-featured, don't play through 100 Mario Challenge on easy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and don't play through it on expert either. <laughs> oh man, like that's one of them. That uh, it's so soul crushingly difficult. Like, and it's not it difficult. Is. You know, the levels are hard. It's difficult in that the levels are like just ridiculous. Like they're they're hard for no good reason. Most mm -hmm. of them. Uh, if you play on normal, you will still get some that are hard for no good reason. You'll get a bunch of auto plays, but you'll also get some really spectacular, really well thought out, well laid out levels. Um, also, some of the venues that we already mentioned, if you go to VG Collect and you go to Atari Age, uh, at least, those two uh, forums have Super Mario Maker threads that you can find where um, folks like us and other folks in the community have tried their hand at levels, and there are some fabulous, fantastic levels in there. There is. Uh, there's also a thread on uh, uh, digital press that I actually I try to flip a few levels off of that too. Nice. So nice. yeah, mo most of the forums will have some sort of. I think there's one at uh, Nintendo Age. I've heard has a, a fairly good one. Oh, I'll have to check out Nintendo Age. Yeah, I haven't been on there in a long time, but I've heard that they have one. Cool. I'll definitely have to check that out. Now, Jeremy, um, did you manage to put together a top five? I have a top five, but I'd like yes. Cool. Do you want to uh, do you want to share with us your top five? And uh, by the way, folks, um, Sorry, the level see. codes. We'll share the level codes after the show in the doodly do. Yeah, I'm building your stage right now. That's what I was doing while you guys were talking. <laughs> You're building a stage. Yes, uh, right when the show starts, I started making a stage for you at the end. Great. All right. Well, I do have my Wii U jacked into the net, so we will be able well, to. Uh, I'm real quick. Okay, well, one of them was a Sonic level, which I had fun with. Um, I think last week we talked about this. The other one was a, a foot race with so Spiny. I haven't beat it yet, but it's actually pretty fun. Uh, my, fourth, uh, fifth, uh, my third and fourth one are just fun little levels, you know. What was the other one? I gotta check my phone because I just took screen captures. <laughs> and the last one was a Pac Man level, which it was oh. fun. And it, it could be improved because it's like an underwater level, so it's kind of sluggish. I think I played that level too. Yeah, yeah. Level. Level. It was a good level, but like, if someone can improve on it, this would be a really great level. Huh. But I, I have all the codes here. We can upload them later. But the boot level is free, or the Pac Man was fun because you get to Pac Man and Evo, and you know, if you, go, if you run fast, you turn into a little ch chomping Pac Man. It's hmm. pretty fun. That's pretty cool. I've seen that skin. I, I've played. I think I played a different level maybe than, than you did, but yeah, I think the the Pac Man skin's actually pretty neat to play with. Yeah, it, I've saw it on one level. It looks sort of like the uh, what am I trying to think of the sort of uh, artwork or not artwork, but the same kind of image as uh, Pac Land. The people I also like are the ones who upload their own amiibos, so you can you know test out the amiibos. It's like, oh, I don't have them, but these guys are nice enough to put their own needles on and you can play them. Yeah, one, one thing I found, I know we talked about this briefly last episode, but if you play through the 100 Mario Challenge, and I found you can do it on easy, medium, or expert, uh, what you get through, you will unlock a, a character or a, a skin. And it's, they, they are the same ones that are the, the Amiibos. I did find that out. Great, awesome. So, so you don't actually have to own the Amiibos in order to get those things. No. Yeah, eventually, I mean, in theory... And there is a hundred of them. I found there's a hundred skins. So eventually, now, you will be able to unlock all one hundred skins. From what I heard, the Mario, the eight-bit Mario skin that gets unlocked, is exclusive to that amiibo. Oh yeah, the big one. Yes, that's right. Yeah, 
I, I haven't, I can't directly confirm that because I haven't played through the 100 Mario Challenge a hundred times, but... <laughs> I'm dreading doing that right now. That's oh, man. Point. So, uh, fortunately, now I can't, I want to throw this out there too, right? Because this, this goes to something that you said last time, yeah. Jeremy, and I 100% endorse this. You last week said to people, don't avoid this game because you think building levels isn't for me. Um, or I might not be any good at it. This is the first game in a while that, and Nintendo does this time after time, in this household at least, this is the first game in a while that I've picked up that I can pick up and play, my wife will pick up and play, my son will pick up and play, and then we'll even play like as a family. Right? We'll watch one of us build a level, we'll provide commentary and feedback, we'll play test each other's levels, you know, and, and, and then we'll, you know, we kind of group approve whether or not the level is worthy of, you know, uploading and stuff. Um, it's, it's a family affair playing this game. And um, it's, there's very few games that I can say that for. I mean, there's games that me and the boy like to play together. There's games that me and the wife like to play together. Um, they're generally different kind of games. And, and it's rare that we really have a game that we just all enjoy together as a family. Um, Nintendo knocked it out of the park with this one. My wife loves building Mario 3 levels. My son loves building airship levels. Yeah. There is one thing I did kind of want to say. And, I mean, it's... it's I don't know. So the, the last episode, we talked about it. And... Because I, I got some feedback on our last episode. And I kind of want to, you know, talk about it. Um... The feedback I got was that we sort of made it sound almost like discouraging in a way. So, like, you know, people who are new at creative levels might look at it and go, well, if I can't make a level that's any good, you know, because I think, I think, I can't remember who it was, but probably all of us used the term, you know, either uh, crappy levels or sucky levels or whatever it was. I, I kind of want to, like, like, apologize for that. I don't want anybody to feel like, like you said, like they can't make a level. You know, because there are, and I mean, yeah. the thing that's important, I think, for everybody to realize is that it's not just the people like us that are, you know, 30-something years old and have, and have played 30 years of Mario games. Yeah. I mean, there, there are kids making the levels, you know, and I don't want the kids to see this or to see that episode and go, well, God, these guys see my level sucks, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I want everybody to feel like they can do it. So... You know, I apologize if, if we made anybody feel bad about their levels or their abilities or anything else. Okay. Now, that all that said, I'm probably going to negate everything that you just said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, do think, I do think that folks need to understand, right, that there's a difference between a level that's fun for you to create and <laughs> a level that's fun for other people to play. Yeah. Um, and I learned this also myself just through doing it. Um... One of the things that I learned, most of my levels are not ridiculously hard. Um, I think I told you guys before that there was a version of Mario that I had made where, like, I just made it ridiculously hard in, like, a jerkish kind of way. And originally I was thinking, oh, I'm going to remake that, like, legit, actually, in Super Mario Maker. Until I went through the 100 Mario Challenge and realized, like, there's a lot of people out there making levels just to F with you. Mm -hmm. Right, like invisible yeah. blocks just before the jump, right? The flagpole's not where you expect it is, so you just jump into a pit, right? Because you have to get through through some alternate thing. Um, so I don't know who was it was saying like crappy, crappy levels and stuff. Um, maybe it was me. If it was me, I do apologize. But here's what I'm trying to communicate, right? There's going to be a huge variety of these levels. And Nintendo doesn't really have a way to tailor the levels that will be funneled your way toward your personal preferences. Some people like levels that are kind of a puzzle. Some people like levels that are kind of a grind. Some people like levels where there's just lots of stuff that's uncharacteristic of a Mario game going on. Some want to go back and kind of relive the glory days and see levels that seem to be built in a very Nintendo-y fashion and have that same level of polish. That's how kind of I am. All kinds of those levels exist mm -hmm. in Super Mario Maker online. So anytime, if I have said crappy levels or whatever, please interpret that as simply levels that do not appeal to me. There are a huge number of levels out there currently in the you know, Super Mario Maker sphere that do not appeal to me. 
Yeah. That said, I am willing to play through 8 to 16 levels in a 100 Mario challenge to find the two or three levels that really resonate with me and star it and add it to my list because I've been having a fantastic time when I find a level that I really like and I star it, after I finish the challenge and I unlock a skin or whatever, I'll go back to my starred courses and I'll actually go and I'll look at the authors and play other levels from that same author and I'll enjoy them typically just as much as I enjoyed that first level I played for them in starred. So really, if you're not having fun with Mario Maker and you're not enjoying the levels that you're playing, you don't really have anybody to blame but yourself because Nintendo's going to throw everything at you and they've given you tools to be able to say, I like this kind of level, and then they've given you, you know, a menuing system which allows you to go deeper into those authors and, and find more stuff that they've made that you're likely to enjoy. So... If you find levels that don't resonate with you, it's not a big deal. There's plenty of other levels that will. Yeah. One thing I look for is percentage. If three people, only three percent people are beating it, I'm not going to play your level. It needs to be a waste of time. I'm just going to get frustrated. I, I'm kind of the opposite way. See, I, I look for ones that are more of a challenge. If I if I see a level that you know, 50 people have played and only two people have beat it, I'm going to play it. I might not beat it, you know, but I'm going to try it. Yeah, and I think I'm, I'm, a thousand of plays and like five people beat it, like. Point, I saw a point five percent. I was like, I'm not gonna try. I gotta be honest with you. The only time I really pay attention to how many people have beaten it uh, is if it's my level. Um, mainly because you know I, I don't think that I make levels that are like ridiculously difficult. I think they're like about as difficult as like a normal like Nintendo made level would be. At least that's what I aim for. Mm -hmm. um, but some of my levels don't really have a lot of don't really have completion rates that high. I mean, some of them are like fifteen the 20% completion rate, and um, so it, it, it does kind of concern me because I, you know, there are people out there that maybe think my levels are crap, and one of the things, we kind of mentioned this last time, the only thing I think is really lacking in uh, Mario Maker from a community perspective is I can star your level or not. What would be nice is if, you know, whether you're going to star it or not, uh, Little Big Planet has this mechanism where you can tag levels. So you can tag levels, and, and they give preset tags, so you can't be like, you know, a-hole or jerk or whatever. <laughs> you can't just make up random crap, right, and, like, make it the tag. Like, they'll have things like, you know, frustrating, difficult, challenging, oh, enjoyable, okay. fun, happy. You know, and, and what would be really nice to know is, are all these people that are bailing, you know, like, why are they bailing? Are they bailing because they're frustrated? Are they bailing because, you know, they think it's too difficult, or are they just bailing they because... That's not worth it. Well, they have, they have the whole uh, Miiverse thing, which, I mean, you can do, leave comments, but, I mean, it's not very... You have to leave the game to do it, I think. Yeah, I don't like that. Which is yeah. kind of inconvenient and not use all user-friendly. But, yeah. I mean, there's, no, so there is kind of a way. I do leave comments on people's levels, but here's my problem, right? If I had a problem with somebody's level, right, like if there's part of the level that was just too darn hard, um, if I leave a comment on their level, it automatically stars it when maybe that's not what I wanted to do, um. right? Like if I'm exiting out of somebody's level because it's just frustratingly difficult and I leave a, you know, hey, nice level, but putting a super Bowser with a giant bullet bill that can fly and I'm just small Mario... Right and oh by the way that's two screens into the level. <laughs> it is not you know what yeah. am I missing something right? I I have to star the level when it's like I I don't want that in my gotcha. I don't like that level I didn't I didn't find it enjoyable like it was very frustrating for me. But I, I think you're right though Tyler like the, the the trick is and the reason that I think they haven't opened up stuff like that is because in any creative medium there's always a desire for us as the person consuming whatever it is, to give feedback, to give criticism, be it constructive or destructive or whatever. Everybody wants to say, here's my opinion, here's what I thought. Not all of us can handle it. Yeah. Some of us just want to make our thing, throw it out there, and pretend it's a Picasso. So um, Nintendo does let you do that. You can make whatever kind of level you want and throw it out there, and you can pretend it's a Picasso. So... I put my level link, by the way, in the chat so you can go find it. Great. 
All right. So, Tyler, what were some of your favorite levels? Let's let, Like you said, let's okay. keep this positive. What were the, yeah. some of the ones that you really liked? So I do have a, a top five of levels that I've played so far. Sorry, let me adjust here. And um, I didn't put them in any, any order or anything like that. There's just top five. So, I mean, you know, you take it as you want. But there's one that uh, I actually found on uh, VG Collect. It was uh, it was linked in our in our thread, okay. and it's by a guy named Ollie, and it's a it's a it's called Mario Marioid. It's a yeah yeah it's a Metroid slash Mario level. Mario is, Marioid was awesome. It's difficult, great. It's very, very difficult. I died on that maybe fifty times. Yeah, because I mean it and it really to me I mean it wasn't just that it's a it's a Metroid level because I love Metroid. Everybody knows that, but. It's that it really kind of captured that whole exploration thing because you had to go clear to the end of the level to find the the, the fire flower, and then go all the way back to the beginning to take a different route to, to get out. <laughs> yeah, I, that. I mean, holy crap! You know, it's amazing. It was um, it was definitely a great a great yeah. level. That's in my top I mean, five as well. Yeah, it's 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 probably my favorite. So there's my number one. Um, the others I just found just through playing. Playing the game, they're not by anybody that I know or have ever heard of before. Um, there's one called Thwomp Keep. It's by a guy named Mark, and um, I don't remember. It seems like I, I, I'm trying to recall just with the top of my head why I liked him. I think that one, because um, you kind of had to go. It used like everything. I mean, it was the, the the length of the course, the height of the course. I mean, you had to go down and up and back, and you know. And I, I really enjoyed how they they use every inch of space, you know, and had a lot of flops and other things going. There's a lot going on, yeah. but it was fun. Nice. And it was it was challenging, but it was enjoyable at the same time. Nice. Um, there's another one that is very similar in that respect that, that I liked, and it's by a French guy. I think it's French, uh, named Sandrillion. Um, it's called Premier Creation, but it's in French, and. Again, it's one of those ones. It's I think it's actually on the on the top of the of the star of levels. If you go in there, it's it's in there somewhere. Right. But it's another one where you have to they use every bit of space. I mean, you go down, up, and back, and up and down. And, you know, you just you constantly through the whole height of the level, and then you go down more and back. You know, it's just it's a great level. That's pretty cool. Um, and there's another one called Bowser's Underwater Hideout. It's created by, by a guy named Purple Link. And it is, there's some puzzles, and there's underwater sections, a lot of uh, squids and fish. You need the fire flower. You know, it's a, a shooting frenzy. It's, you know, kind of fun. And then the other one that I, I really like, because it, it, you know, I think, was it Jeremy that was saying about the, the Pac-Man level and the Sonic yeah. level? Um, this was one that was, it's called Escape on Your Own. And it's huh. made by a girl named Angela. And you, it, the amiibo is it, the princess, and you play the princess escaping on her own. I've I've played that one, yeah. I, that, that one is a good yeah. one. I left a comment on Angela's. Uh, I left a comment with that one. Oh, you did. It, and yeah. she did a really good job with that one. Yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, it wasn't too hard, but it was still fun. You yeah. know, because because you, you're imagining, you know, Princess Peach trying to escape. You know, and it, it, yeah. it, it I really liked it. But those are my my top uh, five. Awesome. Mine, uh, mine, and I'll go through uh, kind of quick because I want to do a uh, uh, red bearded gamer has actually given me a uh, he gave me a, a, a level code for a level that he built while we've been talking uh, on the show, and so uh, we'll end the show with me playing that that level with him live, and you can laugh as I don't know what he has in store for me. How do you make it that hard? <laughs> All right, as long as it's not an autoplay level. I'm not, so, auto play not, not a fan of the autoplay levels. I respect the hell out of the people that make them because yeah. I know it's kind of tricky uh, to put those together. But um, I want to play Mario. I don't want to watch Mario play itself. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so some of the levels that I liked. Um, there's one level that's made by a guy called Buck Twenty, and it's called the Trouble with the Maples. And what I thought was really really awesome about this is I I love how people are finding ways. To to take the Nintendo toolkit and library and use it in ways that we haven't seen before. And this particular guy, Buck Twenty, what he did is 
he took the little wood blocks and he made uh, like maple tree trunks out of them. So you're kind of like climbing through these maple tree trunks and there's a whole bunch of, the screen is filled with the little uh, uh, raccoon leaves that fall out. So it looks like you're climbing through maple trees in fall while they're shedding. And it just, I thought it was just really, and the level layout is really, really fun and it's really a joy to play. So I, that was another one I left a comment on. Um, he's only got three stars, or, or I'm sorry, he's only got um, 13 stars on that level. Currently, he should have a dozen more. It's just really, really, really well done. Uh, another one that was pretty fun uh, that's only got four stars uh, is by, it's called Tilatil, I think is his name. Uh, but uh, it's called Little Guys Finish First. And basically, it's um, the entire level is packed with super mushrooms, but <laughs> the, there's plenty of corridors that are made that you can only get through if you're small Mario. And so basically, the challenge of the game is to, in some cases, it's unavoidable to get the mushrooms. So like, you'll get all these different mushrooms, and you're super powered up and everything, and then you have to try to, like, search around in the level in that section to find, like, the one enemy that exists that'll be able to strip you of your Super Mario ability so you can turn back into small Mario. And then as you go through other parts of the corridor, you have to actively avoid getting mushrooms as they come through. And what was really kind of ingenious about it is you're auto-wired to, like, you see a mushroom power-up, you run for it, you go get it. Um, this was the first time I'd seen a level where, like, it actually, like, if you do that, you will not beat the level. Right, you cannot power up. Yeah, I, I played a similar level to that this morning, actually. That same, not the same level, but the same concept. Like, yeah, this guy, you know, Tiltil maybe didn't invent the concept, but I did think he executed it fairly well in his yeah. in his level. So good, good, good for him. Um, another one that I thought was really, really good. I'm going through my uh, going through my um, levels here. Why did you there was another it? one made by uh, Rudolph. Uh, I think this might have actually been made by one of his one of his kids. This is a uh, Rudolph is um, I think one of the folks that was posting on Atari Age uh, hit levels that he and his family had made. And I think uh, the reason I think this one's his kids is because it's called Pokemon Yellow Version. <laughs> and uh, you know it's it's a fun it's a fun little level. Um, the power ups that you get put you in the Pokemon skins and you know, you, you travel through a very Pokemon-y world, um, and there's, you know, Victory Road is written in coins, and then, you know, Pokemaster is written, you know, in the end in coins, and I, I thought it was I thought it was pretty neat. So the, the young, aspiring Mario makers keep making levels, so that was, I got a kick out of that. Um, another one that I thought was interesting, this is another one where you get penalized for being big Mario, um, and you specifically have to kind of, although what was interesting is you had to become big Mario to get through certain parts of it and then become small Mario to get through other parts of it. But once you've gotten through those parts, there was stuff you had to do with big Mario. There were objects you had to carry from one transition to the other. Otherwise, you get to the end and you realize you can't beat the level because you can't go back because now... It was just very well executed. It's called Cave Saga Level 1, and this one was made by somebody called Steve. So good job, Steve. I thought that was really that was really interesting. Um, Cruise Ship Saboteur is another one by uh, Rudolph. Um, you're in an airship, and what I thought was really, really nifty is, uh, you know, they have you start out climbing up this vine to get onto the airship, uh, there's a bar in the airship. When you go into the bar um, and you walk behind the counter, it goes into like this weird drunk mode where like the the music gets all weird and trippy oh, yeah. and yeah. dizzy. Yeah, everything gets all wavy and stuff. Um, that was that was pretty neat. I thought that was pretty good. And then uh, let's see, the last one. What was the last one that I really really? I'm trying to go through here. But what I like about the Wii U Mario uh, Mario Maker combo, I can have a TV on, watch TV, and sit there and just do all my levels all day. 
Yeah, I did like uh, it was it was Marioid actually. Okay. Marioid was the one other one that I really really I really really enjoyed. That one was by Ollie, I think yeah. you mentioned. So really just a fantastic level. Like you said, captured the Metroid theme of like you can see where you're supposed to go. You know that there's some way to get there and you end up going on this entire adventure just to get the power up that'll enable you to go back to where you started from and yeah. But you have to do it perfectly too, which is great. Yeah, yeah. You have to if do you it lose the mushroom you're your host. Yeah, and like what was really amazing because like it was frustrating like for a bit. Um but the original Metroid for NES was just as frustrating, like <laughs> I can't tell you how much of the original Metroid I spent walking around hearing the beep, 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 and you're just like, you know, you're spending like an hour going, just please don't nothing touch me. Just please don't nothing touch me. Come on. Right? Like, I can't, one hit and I'm dead. Come on. So this this was definitely one of those levels that brought that back, where it's like, just please, no, no, no flying fit. Oh, come on. So, <laughs> so, but it was very well done. It wasn't, um... It wasn't frustrating in a, I want to stop playing. It was a frustrating in a, like, little kid me would have cleared this on the first go. <laughs> right? Kind of thing. Like, I can't be the old man that can't beat a tough Mario level anymore. That can't be me. How did this happen? So, all right, folks. Uh, we did start a little bit late, so we're going to be ending just a little bit late. But uh, I think right now I'm going to go into, um, I'm going to switch over to... My screen view. You guys should be able to see my uh, my mm -hmm. Wii U screen. Makes everything good. Is it uh, is it showing my screen? Yes. Yes, it is. All right. I think I have to go ahead and give the floor though, right? Yes, you can floor yourself. So. Yeah. All right. Right. So there we go. So should be all set there. Um, the audio is just going to be played through my speakers. Um, I do want to give a heads up to folks. Um, if you're doing Let's Plays of Super Mario Maker or other Nintendo uh, franchise games, do yourself a favor. Um, Nintendo is doing cease and desists, and it is, you know, it is going through and protecting, you know, uh, and, and having videos pulled and stuff that it thinks infringes its copyright. Um, now that said, the way around that is really easy. Um, there is a Nintendo Creators program, which I will put the link to down in the doodly doo. If you register for this program, you can register your channel, and you can register specific videos in your channel to get cleared for containing Nintendo music, video, and that other stuff. Um, if you're going to be posting Let's Plays, don't try to sneak it by and then get pissed off if a bunch of your stuff gets pulled. Register with Nintendo. They are going to slap ads on your stuff. You can register with a PayPal account, and they will actually send you a portion of the ad revenue. So if your video goes viral and a lot of people like it, and it sells a lot of ads, you might make a couple of bucks. I so, yeah, so do yourself a favor. Don't take the chances. Just register for the program. You might make some money, and your videos don't get taken down. It's like a it's like a win win. So I'm it's gonna you. go. What's that? This is going to tie us into the furnace level. <laughs> ah, yes. So this is live build for dash, right? Yes. All right, let's see what we got uh, going on here. I just said I kept it easy for you. It's not locked on you anymore. It's not locked on me? No. no. How's it not... Uh... Okay. Um, I am noticing that I don't seem to have... Oh, hang on. Here we go. Ouch. You guys are seeing stuff about three seconds delayed from when I actually see it, just so you know. Nice. <laughs> Did I miss that? Oh, no, I hit the thing last time.
Well, now I know no, I gotta remember something later. <laughs> My goodness. At least you gave me some mushroom power ups. I think I'll be nice. But it's not Metroid. It's not Mario Troid difficult. Whoa! Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> Thanks for that. I didn't try to make it too complicated. You didn't try to make it too complicated. The friggin' turtles have spinies on their... Of course, I died about ten times before I got it past to upload it. <laughs> oh, I keep forgetting that's a ba -bomb. Who puts a ba -bomb in a coin block? Dude, seriously? Yeah, I died about three times there. <laughs> Come on, really? Oh! There's a special place reserved in hell for you, Jeremy. I'm sorry. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, teach me how oh. to stream so you can make me play on your levels. I don't understand why your your levels have a low completion rate, my friend. I gotta say though, this is a decent this is decently challenging. That was just me. That was totally me. You got the coin block. Ah. All right. All right. Oh, come on, really? Oh, there's another one in there? Nice. You gotta teach me how to stream this so you can get me back. <laughs> oh man, this is brutal. Alright. Ah! Oh, that's okay. That's alright. I can still do this. That fire wand and the hammer brothers in the same spot. It's hard because you can't just barrel through it or you'll hit the fire wand. <laughs> yeah, no set. So you have to hesitate, and then that hesitation gives them the perfect window to throw. Wah! The perfect window to throw their hammers. No, no! Whoa, yes! Oh, how'd you do that? Because I'm awesome, that's how. Oh, come on. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's coins in there. I didn't know that. Oh, what am I doing? 
I'm being retarded. Yeah, I just want to say I'm playing it too as we speak, so that's Are why I'm not saying anything. Uh-oh, 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 oh, 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 oh! I made it. Come on! I will beat this level. We're not ending the the show until I beat this level. It, it's going to be an eight hour long episode. I use the help with the pressure beyond the light to the show. Oh! Yeah, I just beat it, by the way. <laughs> How many tries did it take you? Yeah, like four. <laughs> Come on, Chris. You can do it. By the way, you beating it in four tries doesn't count if we can't see it. Pixar, it never happened. I tried to show the screen. Look. Eh, it's not working. Oh, what a coincidence. Well, you can kind of see it. Oh, really? There's nothing up there? <laughs> what the hell, dude? Yeah, I did it on purpose. And now there's like 8 billion freaking spinies of death. Is there... Oh, of course. I'm going to start that little... What? So I'm gonna start that level. Ah, oh. my goodness. I beat it. All right, I'm going to leave a comment. <laughs> All right, here's, here's the comment there. Jeremy, oh, you can't see my screen. I'll show you on the I'll show you on the gamepad. I enjoy your red stylus. There's my comment for you. <laughs> <laughs> and we put that in the doodly do if people want to play that one. Maybe yeah, we'll definitely put it in the doodly do. It's not as difficult. Part of the reason it was a little bit more difficult for me is because in the particular setup that I have here, like, I have to... I'm not... I think there's a little bit of lag on this display. So this is not my gaming display. This is... this is I. Yeah, honey, I'm sorry. I took your LCD monitor. <laughs> so I, I know. So, um, so we need to end the show because I have to give the monitor back to my wife. Um, <laughs> You're in trouble, folks. This has been Retro Reload. Check out the levels down in the doodly-doo. Do your homework um, about the Retro VGS and before you decide whether or not it's, it's for you. I'm not going to say that you should definitely write it off. It all depends on what you're looking for out of the console and what your expectations are. Um, again, if you guys are... Anybody associated with the Retro VGS wants to come on the show uh, and have a safe, open platform to kind of like you know, soundbox and, and, you know, set us or the community straight or whatever, by all means, you have an open invite. Just hit me up in uh, in Facebook or hit me up here on YouTube with a comment where we can get back and, and respond to you. So, folks, Mario Maker, a week and a half in, I'm still loving it just as much as I did the day I brought it home. Same here. Yep.
<laughs> so, peace. Bye. <laughs>